everybody. We are live. It's so great to see you. Thank you so much for hanging out today. It is Wednesday. We made it to another week, thank God. So that's always a good thing. And let's see who we have here today. So we have Mr. Mike Deloach all the way from Atlanta, Georgia area. We have Mr. Steve Lang from the UK. Always a pleasure. We have Wendy from the Dallas, Texas area. How are you today? And we have, uh, let's see who else we got here. Mr. Color Graphics, Roy from New Jersey. Always great to see you, sir. And we have Brad all the way from Manitoba, Canada. And John Diekman all the way from Wisconsin. Wonderful to see everybody. Let's see, we have some more people here. Hey Blue, how are you? All the way from Rockville Center, New York in Long Island. Wonderful to see you. And Nameless Subscriber from California. Wonderful to see you as well. So we have a great group here so far. And today is, you know, as you've probably gotten the email from me, today is uh, darkening the painting. But not just darkening the painting, when to darken that painting, right? It's uh, a big difference to know when, as opposed to just like, okay, let's darken the painting. You have to make sure, of course, that when we are darkening the painting that we have enough information to establish texture. Texture doesn't just happen. Texture takes time and patience and you'll get there. But that's what we're going to be working on today is the, the patience of getting the texture and uh, just slowly going there. But as we are getting darker in the painting, we also want to make sure that we are uh, keeping everything clean. As you can see off camera, I did go ahead and, and uh, work on her dress and it was a little tedious. So, you know, with the tedium, I'm probably going to spare you all. And so that's why I did that off camera. And I will slowly darken that shirt and also bring out some of the, uh, some of the detail in the pattern, you know, and Let's see, everyone is good. I have my matcha green tea over here. Let's see if I can show my face. There we are, okay, fantastic. And um, let's see, so now what we have to worry about is just Coming in with the detail mixture, as you know, four drops of detail mixture, four drops of water, nice diluted mixture, kind of keeps us, uh, how do you say, just, just keeps us um, loose, even though I did work on her a little bit today, um, just for, you know, showing you and teaching purposes, I'm going to start the day coming in with the detail mixture and so what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna peruse and walk around and see if there's anything that I noticed that needs to be done and just go ahead and and do that I'm working on very large areas right now so take note of that in the beginning when you're working for the first time in the day you want to make sure you stick to large areas okay and Let's see. It's great to see you, Wendy. So cool you're here. And everybody, so great you're here. And let's kind of work on some, some of these anatomical areas here. Like the lower eyelid. We'll work on that. And we're definitely going to lighten that up a bit later oh so here's something i did notice so always have a critical eye and no pun intended because we're working on the eye of miss the beautiful talented kelly mcdonald uh-oh 
Let's see. No worries. There we go. Camera turned off. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we're working on the eye camera right. And if I look at my reference, I can see that it goes down here. This little crease in the corner of her eye goes down. So I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. It's a minor adjustment, but a lot of minor adjustments make for a big difference. So when you see something like that, and it's no problem to address it, then definitely address it. See if I can just lighten under her lower eyelid here just a little bit all these little differences you know they go a long way and even though you have an aggressive eraser doesn't mean you need to be aggressive with it Oh yeah, Waltons, I remember that growing up. That was a good show when I was a kid. Okay. So next week we're going to announce the, uh, the picture that everybody's gonna be working from. You're able to download that picture from my website, in inkflingers.com. And uh, and it will have all the all the uh, little uh, details coming for you. So it starts. The, it's going to be for the month of October, which is Inktober. So it's a celebration of Inktober as well. So very exciting, and it's open to everybody. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to look at the shape of her eyebrow since I made some adjustments. Make sure I don't have any tip dry. This angle right here could be adjusted just a tad right here kind of goes a little bit more of a straighter angle right there like I always say you know if you can make the adjustment make it and there's some texture here I'm just gonna pump that trigger create a little skin texture and when I come back into white uh, with the white that's actually going to adjust itself as well which is great uh, hi wendy yes it's going to be a portrait contest using the india ink it doesn't matter what airbrush you're using and it's going to be black and white and the first prize is an extreme patriot arrow thanks to mr mike deloach so uh so that's really great and uh so that's and then second prize is a set of ink and third prize is uh, third prize, and I think we're gonna have a few uh, honorable mention prizes too. So a very good chance to win some. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of people entering. So your percentage of winning is really great. So uh, no, uh, Wendy, it's going to be a uh, a portrait that that we uh, that everyone does. So everyone is on the same footing. Zavi, how are you? Great to see you. So glad you're here. So that's great. Yes, definitely. So, you know, I really hope you enter blue. That would be wonderful. And so it's very exciting. And I love that it's in October, you know, for Inktober, which is really amazing. So it kind of all works together. 
Oh no, you're great at airbrush, Wendy. I, I think you have a good chance of winning. Okay, and... And I'm just going to go ahead and work on some of the hairline. Because if we notice in the hairline, what happens is that... Um, if you don't go ahead and soften those edges, it'll look like she's wearing a wig and we don't want that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and soften those edges. And... Oh, so one, oh, you're welcome. Uh, that's so cool, uh, Zavi, that's, that's really fantastic. And uh, I hope you enter, you have a great chance to win as well. And so I'm, in, I'm just so excited to share it with you. And just thank you to Mr. Mike Deloach for being so generous and being such a great friend to the channel. And Mike Deloach is going to be one of the judges, so, which is really amazing. And the winner is going to be announced November 1st, so, or whatever that, uh, that live stream is that week. So you'll have the whole month of October to paint there. Paint it. So one of the things I wanted to share with everybody, when you're doing the one second rule, you know, paint one second and then look one second and paint one second. But with airbrush, don't have the airbrush on. So, uh, so look for a second and then go ahead and and put the airbrush on or if you're going to have the airbrush still on like the press down for air just keep it held and then look for two seconds whatever and then go ahead and do it so make sure that you're not spraying when you're looking at your reference because then it could be a disaster Dwayne how you doing great to see you sir I'm so glad you're here Mr. Kennedy How's it going? Good to see you. And we have Catherine. How are you all the way from Belgium? That is so wonderful to see you. So we have uh, uh, the airspace, Mr. Kennedy. He is from, he is from the, the Tennessee area. And then we have Mr. Dwayne Marshall. And I keep forgetting, but are you in California? I'm pretty sure you are. And just correct me, I'll get it eventually. Zavi's from Arizona, and it's great to see you. And Squeeze, how are you, Bob? Great to see you. Oh, yeah, so I did get you right, Dwayne. All right, and Squeeze, Bob is from the San Francisco area, which is great. So I'm so glad you're all here. And Catherine, what an honor to see you. Catherine's a wonderful artist from Belgium. And it's late, just like it is over there in England with Mr., uh, you know, Steve Lang, who always comes on the, you know, the live streams. And it's such an honor that my European friends come to hang out and share inspiration. So that is great. So we have Mr. Bill Kennedy in the house. That's cool. And so let's see. Did I miss any questions? Yes, the first Wednesday in November is when we're going to announce it right here on the live stream. Dun dun dun. So that's great. And so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so. Remember, we were going to work on uh, darkening everything, but before we do that, let's see if we can move down to her necklace. I like that necklace. And I think I'm going to erase the pencil lines. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see how this goes. Not too bad. Got some nice darks. 
And now what I can do is continue to uh, work on some of the highlights there. And I can always adjust later. Right, everybody? I can always adjust later. Move over here. And here, the light's hitting the top of these circles. Hey, it broke. Go. All right, and then we have this little highlight right here. Right here. Oh, wow, did I just get three super chats? I did not see it. Who gave me super chats? Oh, my God. So, oh, honey, thank you so much for the... $10 super chat. That's amazing. Squeeze Bob. Thank you for the $10 super chat. That is fantastic. And Mr. Brad, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. You guys are all fantastic. Thank you so much for uh, going ahead and, uh, you know, supporting the channel. It means the world to me. I so appreciate that, everybody. You guys are all amazing. And I had my head down. I wasn't even noticing what was going on over there but thank you everybody that is so amazing yeah that was cool that was like right after one another that was amazing so as you see guys I'm just going to uh, continue working on her little necklace there this cute jewelry she has I really hope so let's send some good energy out there oh thank you honey I appreciate that that means the world. Uh, let's send some good information that um, that Kelly uh, McDonald is going to stop by the live stream before this is over. Or even send me an email. That would be wonderful. You know? Uh, that's, that's the hope. Send some good information. And that, is, that would be great. So, uh, you know, Kelly McDonald is an amazing... Uh, actress from Scotland. I have a little tiny bit of Scottish blood in me, but I'm Irish, uh, uh, so we're all the same. And so I just, uh, you know, and I really love her work. I think she's amazing. She has an amazing look to her, which is unforgettable, right? And so uh, that's uh, what we're looking for. And I'm glad to hear that your granddaughter is doing fantastic. Uh, you know, Mr. Kennedy. So that is a wonderful thing. So as you can see, I, I just went ahead and just worked a little bit on her necklace. Of course, there's a lot more to do. And so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start darkening things, but we are going to be using some of our, our uh, shields. And what I want to do is I want to begin to darken things and keep things clean. So that's the, that's the theme of when you darken, you just have to make sure you keep clean because that's when overspray really ramps up, right? So we're going to work on her hair first, and I don't want any overspray anywhere except on her hair. So... Keep that. See how nicely that fits. And let's make this happen. So I like keeping my freehand shields. I mean my shields, my customized shields for my portraits. I like to keep them. Keep the magnets close. And it's okay if it's, uh, you know, a little bit off on the hair. That's not the real reason for this. It's just to keep things clean. That's the real reason for these things. And it makes a big difference. The advantage, you know, you're working with airbrush. You want to use those advantages, right? Oh, and Mr. Zavi says, what is 
the uh, material for the shields. They are four millimeter acetate, and you can get them at I uh, get a pack of a hundred for like seventeen dollars on Amazon, and that's why I use it. It was the most inexpensive alternative with this type of material, and uh, so basically, uh, it's really great and uh, it cuts really well and it's it's very accurate. So definitely, uh, you want to get that and. Uh, and shoot me an email or an instant message and I'll and I'll send an instant message back with the link. Okay, Zavi? I'll take care of you. Here we go. So now we pretty much have our face covered. We work so hard to keep everything clean, right? And let's see here. Mike says, uh, okay, Mike's have wet conversations out there. That's always cool. And let's see. Um, all right. Very cool. So now what we're going to do is we are going to load the second airbrush, which is the Customized Extreme Patriot 105. Has a larger cup. All the same great... Uh, advances the different backing the special needle the lower trigger the spring on the pack valve uh, you know just everything and then making sure everything's perfect before it leaves my studio to your home to your studio and that's the whole thing you know uh, getting it like quality controlled so it's gonna do exactly what I have my airbrushes do uh, let's see here. Uh, no, I stopped doing affiliates pretty much because it wasn't worth my time. And I don't, this is my own personal thing. I don't want to give a wholesale to, uh, to Amazon without getting compensated for a couple of pennies. But, um, yeah, so basically... I don't do that anymore. I feel when you do the, the affiliate marketing, you're kind of like a pawn to the big corporations. And they give you like peanuts. I mean like ridiculous. So I fired Amazon. So that's basically what I did. I'm going to come in with the uh, light mixture, which is darker. Yeah, perhaps I will. That's a good idea. Uh, that's that's actually the route I usually go, right, Wendy? Is I carried on my website as a concierge service service to the airbrush artists out there. You know, like I do with the gloves and the, and the airbrush and everything. But definitely, I don't do affiliate marketing because number one, you're making other people rich and. You know, I don't mind helping out the little guy, but why am I putting more money in Jeff Bezos' pocket? Nope, not doing it. But I'm always happy to share information with you guys. I do that as a friendship thing. I'm not getting anything from it. You know what I mean, Wendy? It's more of an act of friendship as opposed to an act of, ooh, I'm getting an affiliate. I look like a big shot, but I'm only getting like four cents on it, you know? Patty, how are you? Great to see you. Oh, uh, Colette, how are you? Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> That's amazing. All the way from Wisconsin. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate that. So that is very exciting. So, so we have a total of four super chats today, and that is wonderful. So thank you, everybody. That is really encouraging, so I appreciate that. Light mixture, remember, detail mixture is your lightest, then comes the light. So now we're going to work in the, in the hair, right? So let's see here. Let's work in our hair here. And oh, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, that and right now I'm just going to 
hit those really nice stars. Put that over there. Remember, you want the the magnet close to the edge, right? That's always an important thing because if you have it close to the edge, you're not going to have underspray, and underspray is just ugly. So. Let's keep the uh, unsightfulness of underspray to a minimum. Remember, every battle is won or lost before it's ever fought. If you're actually, you know, mindful of the shortcomings from the very beginning, you are going to avoid it. You're going to win the battle because uh, you're kind of preemptively uh, preparing for it. That's kind of redundant, right? So you're pre no, you're preparing it for it even before you normally prepare. Uh, Yes, so uh, you definitely have to use ink, and that's only fair. And so, uh, so give you time if you want to order a, order some inks. I could even, uh, you know, send them out to you uh, if you don't have any inks just yet. Or you can even go ahead and use any inks you want. It just has to be the inks. It doesn't have to be my ink mixtures. Now, as you can see, as I'm deepening this, uh, it, you know, the lights are actually starting to pop a little bit. And you'll see when I remove all of the other uh, custom stencils, you'll see that, uh, all the custom shields, you'll see that all of a sudden everything will lighten. So that's the real reason for it. Mr. Deepman, number five. Thank you, my friend. That is so great. I appreciate everyone with the support today. Mr. Diekman, all the way from Wisconsin, thank you so much. You are uh, you're amazing. You always are very encouraging, and I'm so glad every week you come and hang out with us. So thank you, sir. And Mike Deloach says, for secondary airbrushes, do you recommend Vega? Yes, I recommend the uh, Vega 1000. It's an amazing airbrush. I use that as a secondary brush to do my uh, my light mixture, you know. Also, the Omni is really wonderful, right? So, uh, I love I love the uh, I love the Vega. It's just such a beautiful airbrush. Uh, Vega, you can get it. It's manufactured by by Badger right now, and you get it at USAAirbrushsupply.com. Highly recommend that, but not for detail. That's for you know more like doing backgrounds and larger work. For detail, I, you know, I honestly would say that the Extreme Patriot Arrow is probably the best that, and as you see, the Extreme Patriot 105, you know, so, you know, not to just toot my own horn, but it is your best bet, you know, I feel it's your best bet to uh, get ahead when working on portraits. I'm going to make sure that. So what I want to do, it's so crucial that I have this edge of the face lined up. I don't want to mess that up. So I'm going to wait on that edge. I'll come back later when I have just the face shield. But right now I'm just going to work on some of the darks of the hair. And right, I'm going to go right on the edge there. I may have to adjust a little bit. It's not the end of the world if that does happen but I'd rather not, right? As you can see, deepening that hair makes the lights lighter, so that means that we can deepen those lights as well. So it's kind of like, a, you know, like dominoes, right? One thing affects the other, and then all of a sudden, everything starts to darken, and before you know it, you're where you wanna be with the painting and all this is setting up the crescendo of working with the dark mixture and then for the pastel for the highlights and everything's going to pop and just really really just wonderfully uh, come together so what I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna just dust everywhere with this light mixture and just darken the whole mass of the hair and 
Well, the magnets never touch the painting. So that's, so you see this is right here. This is only on the acetate, on the custom shield. So it's never on the actual painting, Wendy. Good question. Because yeah, that would be bad, definitely. Because it would, you know, you would never want to put magnets on your painting ever. There can never be a good reason. Okay, so I just wanted to darken a little bit. I didn't want to go too much. I'm just going to remove the freehand shield, the customized shield here, because it's not a stencil. I'm not spraying through it to get anything. It's, it's, uh, so it's, it's like a, it's like a customized shield, I would say. That would be a much more accurate term, I believe. These little magnets, you have to actually grab them. Let's see. Okay, so you see how that nicely darkened the hair and then lightened some of the other areas. And I'm going to still have that beautiful light mixture, which is darker than the detail mixture. And then we're going to go into uh, the eyes, nose, and mouth, as we always do. Uh, yeah, the Patriot is really a wonderful, the Extreme Patriot Arrow is a wonderful airbrush. Um, and yes, definitely got to keep that, uh, that, that painting clean, right? So, so important. Okay, so now I'm going to start on the eye camera right, and we're just going... Okay, so you're going to see a little bit of my hat, but it's the way it's going to be. All right, and let's zoom in on the eye so you can see. We'll get there. Maybe we can zoom in a little more. Let's see. There we go. Okay. All right. So now I don't want to get too crazy with this dark because even though know, I'm coming in with the dark doesn't necessarily mean that the values I'm looking for are this dark. So always be very careful with the values you put in because you may want to go darker. Now I'm going to move back to my detail mixture and I'm going to darken it with the detail mixture which is a lot different than darkening it with this light mixture. You have a lot more control but of course you're not getting as dark, right? So, and then right along the lower eyelid, you see that little line there, right? And let's see if we can put a couple of these little eye, eyebrow hairs, right? And let's move on over to the other one. You don't got to go too dark, so. And let's see. Uh, yes, it does, it does speed the process. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate that. And ah, oh, thank you, Mr. Brad says remarkably soulful. I really appreciate that. And uh, and Honey says the details up close are great. Thank you guys, that is really fantastic. And so now let's go with our light mixture and let's darken camera left, the eye on camera left. Let's see if I can focus a little bit better. There we go. I'm at 2.8, so that's a very shallow depth of field, so it's hard to focus at 2.8. So that's why you see me playing with the focus. I do my live streams with a DSLR because I can control everything, the shutter speed, I can control the aperture. Well, the shutter speed would be the frame rate in movies, right? And I can adjust the aperture. Let's 
And right here on this side of the eye, it's a little bit darker. I'm just going to darken this right there, like so. And I'm going to come back in with the detail mixture. When you're at the 50% mark of a painting, you need two airbrushes going. So, because if you're working in the light, you also want to work in the detail. If you're working in the medium, you also want to work in the light. If you're working in the dark, you also want to work in the medium. So you see how that works? So because what happens is if you are just working with one airbrush and let's say there's something that you need to do with the detail mixture, but you have the light mixture in your airbrush, our nature is going to be, oh, I can handle this with the with the light mixture when you should be using the detail mixture so it keeps us honest so that's very important and let's see if I missed anything ah oh, thank you yes I appreciate that Brad this this airbrush really is a champion when it comes to working in portraits i don't think it has any any superiors out there you know as far as what you need to do with your hairbrush for portraits now right here is interesting i think that this might be a little further down just this kind of uh cast shadow or almost like the cast shadow of the lower eyelid there so i want to get that little ridge where the eyelashes are and I'm going to adjust that but I just don't want to make it too high right I want to make sure I get this correct so I'm coming back there and I'm going to be working on just getting the specifics of that so here is the obicularis oris uh, obicularis oculi which is uh, right uh, the ubicularis oculi is very interesting and I'm going to bring that in and show you what we're doing here. So you see here we have this shape. So you see you have the lower eyelid here, right? And then you have this shape and some people think that maybe this shape is part of the lower eyelid, but it isn't. It's a circular muscle. That's why it's called ubicularis orbit. And it's called the obicularis oculi because it orbits the eye. And it goes right over here. So it kind of goes underneath this cheek area. But this cheek area is not something that is just there. It's there's something happening, right? So I'm just going to very quickly see if I can grab that and show you the obicularis oris. Uh, so I need to hit this plus here and bring in the image great all right so here we are so i'm going to show you the vicularis oris and why it's so important and uh and how that relates to what we're doing okay the obicularis oris so you see this circular muscle coming here now it's not part of the lower eyelid. It actually is underneath the lower eyelid. So that's why you see the, the lower eyelid fits on top of this obicularis oculus. Uh, that is the obicularis oculi. So that's the round muscle over the eye. So like binocular, right? And what causes the fat, right? So that's a good question. What causes the fat muscle? so now or the cheek so let's take a look and see if i could show that to you in a very good easy way so i think we have a good one right here a good image and actually this is a new one i got here so let's see here 
Okay, great. So you see right here, we can see the orbicularis oculi right here going around. And then right here is that fat. And it's called malar fat. And malar is actually Latin for cheek. So it's actually the proper definition translation is cheek fat. So this is a fat compartment. And so let's look at that together and see in her face how right now we have the orbicularis oculi going underneath, right, and continuing. But right on top of that is the malar fat. And that's why we're seeing, so I'm just going to be further away and I'm just gonna darken that a tad so I can accentuate the malar fat as it goes on top of the orbicularis oculi. So when you see these shapes, there's no accident. It's happening and it's very predictable, right? So that's something to, uh, is really important. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Yes, Wendy, uh, very true. Uh, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be available. You guys are gonna have a lot of time to work on it and you're all gonna have the same image. Uh, you can just download that image from inkflingers.com and I'll have a link where you all can just, you know, simply download that. Okay, so now we're gonna be working on the malar fat, right? So I'm gonna zoom out. And you can see this area right here. So I'm just going to increase my distance and just make sure that I'm actually accentuating that shape. And so it makes, it makes a lot of sense to really understand what we're painting and why, because that's gonna take our work to that next level. Well, the obiculus, the obicul, uh, obicularis oculi basically stops here uh, and then something else. There's other fat compartments right here. So it'll come right here, right about here. And then right here will be another compartment of the jowl fat. There's a smaller one here and there's a bigger one here. And also right here uh, towards the back of your jaw. That is actually called, uh, let's see, what's the name of that one? I believe that one is called the zygomatic cutaneous leak. No, that's, uh, I'll get back to you, but there's a separate uh, compartment of fat right here. So it might look like they're all the same, but they're not, you know? But what's interesting, as we get older, you know, they do kind of lower. So that is true. That is true in a sense. That's why all the information that I'm getting about the fat compartments are actually coming from uh, documents that are provided by um, plastic surgeons. So let's look at the other eye with in relation to the orbicularis oris over here. You can't see it as much, but it is there. So you see right here, it's a little bit darker. And then this comes down. And then you still have, uh, it's not as pronounced, but when I come in with the white pastel, you will see it a lot more. Okay, I'm gonna come back in with my light mixture and let's go ahead and see if we could darken some of the shapes of her face. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring in the eyes, nose, and mouth shield here. See if I can find it, right? That's always a, an adventure. 
But definitely uh, take my, uh, if you take my um, mentorship program, you definitely would be privy to all of this info, which is fantastic. Actually, I am not going to use this. I'm just going to go freehand. Let's make this happen. Okay. So I just want to darken her lower eye, her nostril. Lower that pack valve just a tad. And let's get in there. Do my one second rule. So right there in the corner of her mouth, the corner of Kelly's mouth here, it's a little bit darker. Such a cute lips. When you're darkening, you want to be very, very uh, careful, right? You don't want to go too dark and that could happen and once you go too dark then everything kind of goes haywire so make sure you keep those values true and keep them together oh mike have a great night always a pleasure thanks for hanging out my friend and uh don't work too hard okay sir oh gotta take a uh matcha green tea break Oh, that's so good with lime came out really good so really happy with that okay so I'm okay with the mouth right now and as you can see we're working on some of the major anatomical forms so right here remember we don't want to come in with the white too soon uh, you know or the darker values until we really get in there and kind of work on texture so let's work on the mental fat. And the mentalis is actually uh, part of the uh, chin or the front of the jaw. And the mental fat is, for most people, it's a round kind of uh, golf ball shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of making this golf ball round and setting up for the white pastel. See, what happens is we as people tend to kind of simplify values into black and white, but there's a lot of subtleties going on when things are turning. And let's see, uh, so that's really cool. And okay, so now I have to make sure I don't go overboard with some of these shapes. So it's a good time when you're at this stage to go ahead and start establishing some texture and refine those shapes so everything is in line. So remember, things go from light to dark both sideways. So the light in this painting is on the left. It's in front of her and it's also above. So everything's going from light and dark from left to right, as well as from top to bottom. Okay. So we got to make sure because she's a three dimensional form in a three dimensional space. So we have to paint her as that. Of course, she's not just a form. She's a person, which is you know, far more complex and more important than a form, but she is a form nonetheless. You know, when she walks in a room, whatever the lighting is going on is going to affect her, is going to affect her appearance. Here's a great opportunity here. I can see, you know, via some texture here, that I can come in with that medium mixture and darken the bottom of her chin. 
And what I'm after is sort of a old master type of painting done in modern times. So now that I darken her chin, everything's going to lighten up and things are going to start to turn because if you don't have the full ray of values, things are not going to look three dimensional. And that's why we need to go from, let's say, the medium mixture to the, the detail mixture to the light mixture, right? And you see, I can always adjust. And right in here, it's darker as it comes in here. So we're going to make sure we get that. We definitely could use a freehand shield here. You always want to cover what you don't want to spray. So this way, when you spray, you're going to have this really nice edge, perpendicular and not parallel. Then we get a nice harder edge. And let's see. Brayden, how are you? Great to see you, sir. How's everything? I'm so glad you're here, my friend. All the way from Canada. So uh, when when will your new house be ready in Edmonton? Brayden just purchased a new house in Edmonton, so I think that's great. Congratulations. That's a very wonderful uh, accomplishment in this life. I haven't made that accomplishment yet, but I admire those who have. You know, those who own your own homes, my, my hat off to you. So as you can see, as we are darkening, you can see how the mid-tones are lightening up, right? So that's the main thing, is that as you darken, things are starting. Ah, uh, honey, have a great night, always a pleasure. Uh, well, no, no, I don't think honey's going, right? She didn't say she was leaving. Uh, nope, honey's still here, very cool, okay. Uh, on the 14th, that's right around the corner, Braden. That's great, so that is, Fantastic. I hope to see the, uh, the pictures when you have an opportunity. That's going to be great. And you're going to have your own studio there and your own house and just amazing. I'm going to go back to her hair a little bit. And so now is a great opportunity. So now you see as I darken this area over here with the light mixture, we can definitely see that some of these mid-tones all of a sudden lightened up. And that's the exciting part as it just sort of develops. Now, I'm going to come in with a face-only shield. And because I want to darken her, her chin, there's a really beautiful dark there. And let's see. That's the hair. And this, of course, is the border. This is her neck. This is the silhouette. Let's see if I was... Oh, very organized today. All right, hats off to Tim. Very organized, not always. So this is good. So we'll put this over here. And we'll set ourselves up because I want to get that beautiful edge. And I'm only going to get that by, by thinking ahead. Every battle is won or lost before it's ever fought. Sun Tzu. Plus this is going to be exact. So I could definitely take advantage of this edge here. Okay. Of course, we want to go ahead and put these magnets close to the edge, right? Uh, Mr. Lang, thank you so much all the way from the UK. I really appreciate it. You take care, my friend. You are the best. And I uh, always appreciate uh, when we meet for class. A very talented artist, Mr. Steve Lang. Say hi to Tilly for me. And take care, mate. 
And, and uh, so honey is going to bed. Take care, honey. Have a great night. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you so much for the super chat sticker. I am honored. Thank you. Just want to make sure I get this correct. So right now I'm just going to work on the chin. So I'm not going to worry about anything else. I just want to get the chin area correct. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on. Okay. Put the magnets are there. I got the, uh, I don't want the detail mixture. I want to go a little darker. So I'm going to go with the light mixture. And let's make this happen, everybody. Put those magnets right to the edge. We ain't afraid of no underspray. So let's go ahead and bring these all the way over to the edge there. You're going to have beautiful dark edge without worrying about making a mess. Right here, we're going to have a beautiful edge right there, right? That's what we want, beautiful edges. So confound the viewers when they're looking at this painting in the future. And then they're looking at your painting in the future. So let's see how that darker edge, when we remove this, how that looks. Beautiful. See how we're getting a lot more contrast? We're darkening the portrait. And as we are darkening these areas, what's happening is, is we are darkening. We will then in turn have to darken these other values, which are now mid-tones. So let's work on a wonderful contour of her cheek, of her whole face. It's all about elegance of line. Line is everything. Line is the truth of art, Angra said. That's Jean Augusta Dominique Angra. Line is everything. Beautiful line. If you have beautiful line, you're going to have a beautiful painting. It's your handwriting, right? If you have a shaky, kind of nervous line, it's going to translate into a shaky, nervous painting. So work on beautiful line. When, John, when uh, Edgar Degas, a young man, the famous pastel painter, went to uh, John Augusta Dominiganga, he was much older at the time. I believe he was in his 60s. And so Degas went to... Angra and showed him his work and asked for advice and you know what uh, Angra said draw lines young man draw lots of lines that's what Angra said to this the uh, one time famous uh, Edgar Degas draw lines my friend lots of lines So Degas and Angra were kind of, uh, you know, similar artists from different generations. And you can see how Angra took it a different step working in past, I mean, Degas took it in a different direction working in pastels. Okay, so I'm just going to darken this whole area right here. Why? Because as I darken this area, the... Uh, the contours and the shapes and values in, in those contours uh, going inside the cheek area and the eyes are going to darken up. So everything you do, like a domino, is going to have an effect, like a, drawing a pebble, pebble into a, a very still lake or pond. It's going to grow out. So when we darken areas, other areas are going to be affected. So this whole technique of working with transparency and going over that basically is the whole idea of you know things darkening up over time and when you darken one area you give yourself permission to darken the adjacent areas but as i'm doing this notice that i'm pumping that trigger i'm lowering the air pressure so I'm doing two things. I'm darkening at the same time creating texture. And there's no easy answer for skin texture. 
it's basically just you know painting putting in your hours and the skin texture will come but always you get skin texture over many layers and that's that's basically the truth I feel and you can see I'm just pumping that trigger and I'm working on the shape of the malar fat it's a three-dimensional form right and And then over here, this is going to slightly darken up. Over here, the cast shadow of the hair. So, you know, the whole idea of working with anatomy and looking at the anatomicals, ah, uh, so that's cool. Um, so everything is, uh, so yeah, so the idea of working with the um, working from light to dark and bringing the whole painting together, painting the ensemble and not, you know, worrying about one feature and looking for that. If you look for the value right off the bat, it's the wrong approach. And I'll be bold to say it, it's the wrong approach. You want to gradually get there. You want to bring, that's just the approach of the old masters. And this is what you want. You, you definitely... We definitely want to paint the ensemble. So you see as I'm darkening her face, what's happening is, is that the neck is looking really, her neck is looking really light. So that means we have to adjust again. And just like everything, you know, you, you darken one area, you have to come in and catch everything up. And then you, then the story begins again. So I'm going to look and squint my eyes at the value of her chest area, right? And I can see, like, where is the value kind of similar? And I would say right about here. So now I can gauge and I can pump that trigger. And sometimes, all the time, the space in between where you spray is just as important as where you spray. So you see I'm pumping that trigger, moving around, not only creating a value, but creating skin texture. But skin texture doesn't happen. It happens over the time period of your whole painting. And that's the way you want to approach it. And you see little dark shapes here and there in the hair. Put them in as you see them. And with hair, you just want to continue working throughout the painting and you'll get there. Don't try and handle it all at one shot. You'll go crazy. Uh, hair is like really complicated. You got to kind of have to work on the hair over, over a period of time. And for her dress, I'm going to slowly darken everything. But while I'm here, right, maybe I could start to work on some of the folds, right? So I see I have a fold coming up here like so. I can maybe begin to work on some of them. Uh, then we have a secondary fold right here. I can bring that up. So if you look at the work of the old masters, they paint the fabric and they paint the, uh, the prints and then they paint the folds. And I learned that from, you know, being at the Met during all the years that I studied at the National Academy. The Met was only about three blocks away. So you see how I'm kind of 
working in those folds as I go. But first I worried about the, uh, the patterns. So I'm going to pretty much, you know, work on those folds, get them established, and then darken slowly. Always have to have a game plan. But notice I'm not coming in with the light mixture. That would be too dark. You know, when you're sketching, you don't want to sketch with a dark color, uh, a dark ink. The detail mixture is for the sketching part. See how before it was just like this kind of uh, blank kind of shape and now uh, this this blouse is starting to have a three-dimensional form to it. And remember, the folds always follow the form underneath, right? So always remember that. Goes there, and this goes right here. One second rule is really going to help you here. Everything is affected by the same light in the same way. I'm not going to go too far. I just wanted to show everyone how I will develop the forms of, of fabric. And how just by doing this, she's becoming much more of a three-dimensional form. Like you can feel her body underneath her her blouse, right? It's very important. Okay, so that's about it for for the blouse there, and then we can continue working on some of those skin textures. So this little area of her arm here, it has a lot going on. So let's come in first with the detail mixture and kind of reinforce this shape here. Now her blouse is, you know, her, her arm is going underneath her blouse. So we're going to definitely indicate that. And then right here is a lot more of a harder edge, right? And... Hey, Mr. Air Todd, how are you? Good to see you. And let's see. Uh... Oh, so glad you're feeling better, Mr. Todd. Thank goodness. Ah, uh, John Deakman, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Always a pleasure. I'm so glad you were here to hang out, and it's an honor, and I hope to see you soon, my friend. My regulars are amazing. I look forward to people who are regulars, people who stop by, but my regulars, you guys got a special place in my heart, guys and girls. Regular family, that's right. <laughs> that is right, Wendy. See how, you know, it's not just a straight line, right? It's, you know, the way that the fabric is, the angle of the light, you're going to see a different kind of form. Right here, as it's, as the fabric is closer to her arm, the cast shadow is going to be a hard edge. As that cast shadow gets further away from the arm, 
that hard edge becomes soft. Okay, not good. You can see that we did get a little bit of the, um, it's nothing to worry about. So the thing is, when something like this happens, what happened is, is that the light mixture kind of built up on the uh, freehand shield. And you see how that happened? That's just a hair. So right there, I'm just going to let that dry and then I'll handle it afterwards. But the thing is, not to, when you do make a mistake, just don't get emotional about it. Just assess the situation, wait, and then handle it when it's dry. Always the best route to go. Okay. So we're going to let that dry, but we're not going to be daunted by it. We're just going to keep going. So I'm going to pump the trigger with the detail mixture. And right now I'm just going to be working on establishing a little bit of the skin texture of her arm. And I'm still doing the one second rule. And I'm just watching what the, uh, what the arm is doing. And that's what you have to worry about using freehand shields is that ink can accumulate and I think I had it accumulated before and then repositioned it. So always be careful of that. Yes, Wendy, you always got to step back. Step back and, uh, oh, Patty, have a great night. Always a pleasure. Always great to see you. Just darken that up right there. So you see what we're doing is we're just kind of establishing the tonal value. There's a lot going on there. And I'm still tempted to go erase there. But Wendy, what we have to do is we have to chill, right? I have to chill. So what I'm going to do is wipe that freehand shield, make sure that there's nothing, no ink on there. So when you fall off that horse, you get right back on. See, no issue. The thing is, is that you have to make sure that you don't get afraid of that, right? So you just, you know, you learn from it and then you move on, but you, you don't, you don't get uh, nervous about doing stuff like that. You just got to be a little more careful. That's all, right? And let's see. So now we're going to let that dry, have it in back of my head. And we're going to move on. Okay, so we darkened her arm, which is really nice. And so things are darkening up really nicely. So now I want to make sure that I kind of work on a little more of the... Actually, remember I was working on the lower eyelid, right? Let's go ahead and take a look. Because I wanted to work on that, but I didn't want to work on it when it was wet. So let's take a look. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to look here and I see that this area right here, a lot of times, you know, your conscience gets in the way and not your subconscious. A lot of people say your subconscious gets in the way. The reason why I say your, your conscious gets in the way, because when you dream at night and you dream of people, they look photorealistic, don't they? right? They really do. They look totally photorealistic. So why is it that when we're painting, we don't see the photorealism like we do in our dreams? Because we're, we have that information of what somebody looks like. Our memory is so much more complex than an inkjet printer could ever be. So my contention is, is that our consciousness is in the way. So what we think everything is, we think too much as people, but what we have to do is think like we do in our subconscious. So the description of the lower eyelid here is basically the form, there's no line there. There is a slight line right here, but only a little bit right there. And then we have, of course, ubiquilaris. And everything's going to look much better when we come in with the 
white mixture, uh, the white uh, the white pastel. But right here, there's this ledge of the lower eyelid. I want to put that in. And that looks much better. Paint what you know, uh, not what you see, or paint what you see and not what you know. I think it's a combination of the two. You don't want to just paint what you see, and you definitely don't want to just paint what you know. See, now you can see the ridge of that lower eyelid. That makes much more sense, and it's just a better job. And so that's that's what I'm looking for. I'm really hard on myself to do the best job I can and get my 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 consciousness away for, out of the way of my painting. There we go. So now you can see I have an accuracy which before eluded me because of my consciousness. Now, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so you don't want to get rid of everything from your consciousness because that's where we have the anatomy and stuff like that and other information which is quite useful. And so you kind of want to, you know, walk that tightrope between the two. Now I'm happy with that. And now we can come in with the pencil to establish where we want to spray, you know? Oh, Wendy says she doesn't have 4K in her dreams. That's funny. And uh, Wendy says she's sweating. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to grab my pencil as soon as I find it. If, if I can't see it, it's under something or behind something. So when you think of it that way, it's not far off. It's just underneath something. Okay. Do, do, do. Um, now it could have fell in my drawer. No. Okay, so it's a green mechanical pencil. Hmm. Okay, it's probably right in front of me and I can't see it, but maybe it's in the living room. Did I use it for anything today? Good question. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Nameless says, uh, listening to you is like listening to a soothing podcast. Oh, thank you, my friend. I'm so glad you're here. And I really appreciate, you know, one of my regulars, uh, Mr. Nameless. So thank you for hanging out and always being so encouraging. I definitely, definitely appreciate you. As I wander the studio looking for my pencil. <laughs> ah, it's right here. I know it. Unless I move to some... Oh, no, that's not it. You know what I'm thinking? It fell. So if it fell, it could be on the carpet. Okay. All right, so... Not here, not here, not here, not here, not under there, not behind that, not under this airbrush, not over here, not over there. So I do have a sharpened pencil right here. It is a 6B, so don't want to go with a 6B, but let's see what we what we can do here. Okay. 
So right here will indicate where the line of the lower eyelashes are. See, the space is so important as well as the angle. Okay, very cool. And yes, it definitely falls behind, right? Falls behind something. And it's probably right in front of my head. You know, uh, that's what usually happens. The second the live stream's over, it's, I'm going to fall over it. And, um, but it's very peculiar. I could have been walking around with it. A lot of times when I'm drawing, I'll walk around with it and end up in the refrigerator or something like that. Uh, so I'm just going to be very careful. Accuracy is so important, right? I'm going to use a detail mixture. And I'm just going to... Kind of put in the dark here so then I could shape in it a little bit with the white pastel. So I'm kind of thinking ahead of time, right? And then I can come here. Now that I'm here, I can maybe erase out some of this detail here. The obicularis oculi. Um, see, I'm tempted to erase, but let's go back. So now that we're here, we can actually go back to that arm. Remember, Wendy, we made that mistake? So now this should be workable without damaging the paper. No matter what you're working on, if you're working on canvas or whatever, you still don't want to damage anything. So we're going to see how this works. And you can see that erases quite nicely. And you don't want to damage that paper. So. Always be careful. So now, you see we have that there. Now I can come in with my detail mixture. I can work around this dark. And pretend this never happened. And then I'll come back and lighten that up. And that's that. It's uh, So when you zoom out, it's no longer an issue, right? But if I went and got nervous, I could have done something I didn't want to happen. So that's very important. Yes, the suspense. <laughs> Definitely, Bob. And yes, that's why Brad says he has a lot of pencils. Yeah, I definitely agree that could be uh, a very good thing to have. I need to get more mechanical pencils. Okay, so let's work on the side plane of her nose, camera right. It'll come up here. So I am going to reward everybody. I'm going to be coming in with the last half hour or so. We're going to be coming in with the white pastel. So. I think we're ready because we are getting enough texture so we can handle that. There we go. All right, time to come in with the white pastel. This is always a fun part. Uh, this is the first time we're putting in the white pastel, so there's going to be several iterations of working with the white pastel. So we'll just put this here, and let's get our paper stump right here. And I always love starting with her eyes. So let's begin with this eye here, camera right. And 
come right here and then let's make this happen This angle in her eye is very important. We want to make sure we get that angle correct. And the white on, on our skin a lot of times is like snow, kind of accumulates in certain spots. kind of the shape of the malar fat, right? The malar fat is going to be getting a lot more, a uh, lot more light, right? And Oh, what tool is that, Wendy? The paper stumps? Some of the translucency in her eye. And that white in her eye, we just have to build it up. Let's move quickly to the other eye. And then we'll see how everything kind of uh, ramps up for us. A lot of times the shape adjacent to the shape describes the form more than the shape itself. And I think that's happening here with her iris. Fun fact, when you are, you are looking at a painting, a looking at a photograph, you can actually see what kind of uh, lighting was used to make the photograph. In this case, you definitely can see it was a square softbox looking in her eye right here. So right here is the retro obicularis oculi fat right here. And that's always a fat compartment that's on the outside of the eye in between the eyelid and the eyebrow. So it is much more uh, area fullness of form and here you see we're going to describe the lower eyelid more by the adjacent shape than the eyelid itself the lower eyelid itself And as you zoom out, you can see that how much life is coming into her just from this here. I just love her expression. It's like this inquisitive look, which I love. A friend of mine has a, that kind of inquisitive look. When she looks at you, and see how we're kind of working on that malar fat right there, and oh yes, yeah, so this is definitely Wendy. Uh, this is a just a a, a tortillan, which is different than a stump. 
but same same process let's darken this a little bit there we go okay so let's work on some of the larger areas here of light so now I'm kind of rubbing that white pastel into the surface I can lighten this a little bit there we go so you see how this uh, malar fat compartment that we all have right here comes forward in front of the obicularis oculi on her nose uh, mr. nameless said uh, let's see oh yes it's a blending stump very true good good call oh, very cool she is a great actress I think she's fantastic And you could use the white pastel to kind of lighten up the uh, trend, the uh, lighten up that transition tone. And build up that those lights, those highlights. Now I don't want to just hit the highlight because there's some lighter areas. So I want to build up the light and then hit that highlight. But if I hit that highlight first, then I have nowhere to go. So build up the light areas first and then come in with the highlight and then things work out. Just like when you go dark, right? We work in the dark. We don't want to go too far, too fast. So we're going to go slow as if we were working with the uh, working dark right with the inks so we're building up these lights and we can actually push them back with the uh, needed eraser and I'll show you guys that in a bit so let's build up these lights here on the forms of her cartilage here on her nose going to put the reflected light right underneath the nostril there see how that makes a difference right above the nostril I should say and it's also a great opportunity to form the transition tone underneath her nose like that and so remember I told you that we'll actually go ahead and uh, use our kneaded eraser to really bring that white pastel exactly where we want it. I've been working in pastel since I was a kid, so the one thing I definitely do is know how to control it. When you work with a, in some medium for many, many, many years like I have, you really will make it bend to your will. So now that I went ahead and built that up, now I can go ahead, now I'm ready to hit that highlight. But not until then. And plus you're looking at the shape of that light, right? Because it follows the form. This doesn't mean that we're as dark as we need to get. We're going to continue darkening as we go. And let's, uh, let's move down to her lips here. And 
let's see what we can do over here. It's a little bit lighter. Now you can always come in with your Fonz and Porter and you could hit some of the lighter areas. You don't have as much blending ability with the Fonz and Porter, but you do have the ability to get much nicer hard edges. So there's a tool for every job. little bit of light right there okay and then right here we have a little bit of light just kind of hitting the ridge of her lip there now I can always calm that down as you can see but let's see what everything else is around and you can see as we come in with this white pastel it's having a twofold thing it's uh it's getting the values in line, but also softening her features and making her as pretty as she is. Okay, remember we were talking about the Maller fat, right? That it's like a golf ball. It's a golf ball size shape. So I'm going to take that white, and if the light's coming from above and, and to the right and, and in front, so that means the light is going to be lighter on the top because the top of the malar fat, or the mental fat here, is facing the light most directly. And now we can actually come in with our detail mixture and... Darken that. There we go. All right. Let's see if I missed anything. Ah, oh, thanks. Wendy says I'm the lip master. <laughs> That's always funny. Thanks, Wendy. definitely can calm that down a little bit. The um, Easy Eraser works with Fonz and Porter as well to calm that down. Now there are some uh, with the lips it's a little more complex so uh, part of the lip is actually facing the light more directly and we're just gonna make that happen. And same thing here. See how it's a, there's a lot more volume than what we normally see. Now the lower lip is lighter, but in the sense that it's more tran it's more translucent. So how I do that is I take the white pastel and I lightly dig it into the surface, and that's when you get this sort of translucency, and that looks really good. So you see how it has more of that transparent feel. And you can see how fast the painting is going. Once we get to this stage, things ramp up at a, like an incredible speed. And let's zoom out. So now you can see things are looking a lot different all of a sudden. So now let's go and work on her forehead and remember you know, you have a lot going on in the forehead. There's anatomical forms. There's the frontalis bone here, right? So as we're working on this, let's quickly uh, go into the... Uh, uh, oh, thank you, Brad. I appreciate it. Brad says she's looking great. Much appreciate it. Oh, and Zavi says she's looking great. Thank you so much. And uh, Wendy, thank you for that. And so let's go ahead. And uh, I'm just going to bring in the uh, skull image right now so we can 
understand exactly how we kind of light the forehead. The forehead is, is really complex, right? And we don't give it as much attention when we're doing portraits. So right here you can see there's this ridge area right here and on this side. So again, the light is actually very similar to what's happening in our portrait. Uh, not really because we have this shadow here, but so we're going to make sure we have this light area because that's facing the light. This little ridge area on both sides above the eye sockets and also this temporal uh, ridge I believe is right here and so we and then you have the zygomatic bone and we'll address that as well so let me go ahead and close this out and we'll go back and really look at with the white pastel how we can really make things kind of uh, three-dimensional as they are okay so remember there's this uh, ridge right here so we're going to build that up and remember it's like snow right if you have a mountain on the top of that mountain that's facing the snowstorm the direction of the snowstorm that's when you're going to get the most white and so then the whole saying is where there's more light it's going to get more white so and that's what we're going to do we're going to make that turn right here remember these uh these uh Right here is the uh, corrugator supercilia muscle right here. And so we're going to go ahead and where you have a, a, a fossa or, or an indentation, you're going to have a light on the other side. And that's, yeah, so in anatomy books, they always call a dent or, uh, or a hole or something like that. In the anatomical forms, they call it a fossa. So, but you see here, this ridge, remember the ridge that's on top of the eye socket? So that's what we're putting in now. See, the forehead is such a great opportunity to get her likeness that a lot of artists will miss because they don't know anatomy. And that's the whole thing about being a portrait painter, is you have all this opportunity to make a much more profound statement with your work. And, you know, knowing anatomy gives you more opportunity, which is great. Yes, the skeleton is so important. So important. It's going to move. Oh, I'm moving to another area off the camera. That's not good, Tim. So whatever's facing the light gets more white. Right here, this faces the light. I'm gonna exaggerate here and then I'm gonna kind of uh, pull it down with the kneaded eraser. We are far from done, but I'm just establishing some of the lighter values and rubbing this into the surface. I'm able to create the complexity of the values within the shapes. They're not, you know, just one value, but there's, you know, the smokiness to them. Right here, there's a little bit of light there. Okay. And Let's move some of this light over here. Inside the hairline. Raise this up a bit. Great opportunity. See, there's always opportunity to, to refine your painting even more.
Okay, so now if we zoom out, we can definitely see uh, how that forehead is, her forehead is really shaping up. Again, I, I over-exaggerated some of the light, but you can always just bring that down with the white pastel, which is great. Starting with the neat eraser. Okay, so let's work on her malar fat right here. Light is going to hit that slightly different than the opicularis opali. I just love that when you stick to the program, things just kind of come together. It's like it's like a promise of uh, having faith in uh, in a certain method, a certain game plan. You're gonna come up on top. So a lot of times, so if I want to know like how light I need to go, I could look elsewhere and say, is it as light as this area? No, is it as light as this area? And you can kind of gauge like what you already have. You can gauge what the values will be, which is good. I'll be coming back in with the detail mixture working back and forth. Here I can calm this down here a little bit over there, which is really nice. There's a lot going on in these midtones, and you don't want to just leave these uh, midtones as they are. They're much more complex. See how it's much lighter in here. So I'm just going to rub in the pastel, kind of get that trend lucency within these shadows you know what it is there's a lot of light bouncing all over the place and so you want to sort of uh, make sure that you pay attention to the complexities of the light what it's doing now this right here a lot of people will call the cheekbone that's incorrect it's not the cheekbone you're seeing you're seeing the shadow or the indentation or the bottom part of the zygomatic bone and that is also used to be known as the cheekbone but now it's or even used to be known as the malar bone which goes back to the malar fat so it really if you really think about it logically it shouldn't be called malar fat it should be called the zygomatic fat compartment And you see a lot of opportunity to put some of the translucency in these little shadow areas. And, you know, and that kind of uh, takes away the harshness because you're painting a woman and women are not harsh. And you want to accentuate the soft qualities of a woman. Okay, and let's see what I missed. Uh, Davi says she looks great, and oh, I didn't miss anything. That's cool. And oh, so Wendy says she likes the ability to push and pull, definitely. And that's what you want. You want to be able to. Uh, but notice that this is week four, right? So I didn't do this in uh, week one or week two or even week three. You have to make sure you earn this the area, earn this ability to get to this stage by, you know, doing things the right way and slowly. Definitely have to lighten this area here. This is caused by jow the jowl fat compartment right here, but I was overzealous, so I need to calm that down. And as I calm down here, you're going to notice that she's going to soften up and just look so much better as she does look. Not better than she looks. She looks amazing already. A 
lot of these different so a lot of places are too harsh and you can see I can soften them up as I work I got to get I need to get rid of the harshness of the early stages right that's in, so imperative and I think that's what takes the work to the next level it's the ability to get subtle Off camera for next until next week. I'm going to work on her blouse a little more, just darken it up. It's very tedious, so I won't trouble anybody with that. Let's see what I missed. Brad says, don't forget to hit the like button. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate that. So that's cool. So if anyone is interested in the airbrush that I use, the link's in the description. I do sell them on my website, inkflingers.com. So definitely check that out, which I so nicely covered my website's name. So there we go. And you can also purchase the inks and purchase artwork so uh, that would be great if you just go ahead and check out leave a little message in the guest book say hello and if you're not on my mailing list this way any live streams come up I could alert you which would be cool and also subscribe there we go okay so now that we did that let's see if we could uh, work on her neck area a little bit come in with some of this white pastel kind of describe some of the form of her body and you know it's just like I always say you know the the adjacent forms always describe the forms more than the form itself and notice how we work on you know her her neck and chest area kind of describes the uh, her hair a little bit more and the blouse so that's all very cool And it's a long battle, right? The portrait is a long battle. And some people say, wow, Tim, you take a long time. Because it takes a long time to do it right. There are no points for speed. None whatsoever. Have a great night, Mr. Brad. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. So we have three minutes left. I always try and give you the full, full two hours. So let's work on her eyes. I wanna work on the kind of the ridge of her eyelid, lower eyelid. It's always very elusive and it's wonderful if we can get it. Concentrate on this. Good way to close out the night. It 
there we go see how we we are able to establish this happy with that shape this a little better put a couple of nice lights right there kind of bring that in Todd, have a great night. Always a pleasure. Wendy, have a great evening. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And uh, so that's so cool. Yes, we definitely missed you, Wendy. I'm so glad you're back. So we're going to work on that lower eyelid here. 11.29. We're going right to the end, aren't we? Let's come right over here. So notice the life that we're bringing to this portrait because we're tenacious, tenacity. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we have. Okay, so you see nice... Uh, we have some nice emotion going on in this portrait. A lot of good building up. So everyone, Catherine, thanks for hanging out all the way from Belgium. Always a pleasure. Uh, Wendy, Brad, Todd, Bob, thank you. And Bob and Brad, thank you for the super sticker. John Diekman, uh, thank you for the super sticker. Thank you so much. Uh, Honey for the super chat sticker. And uh, thank you, Colette. Uh, you guys are all amazing. I really appreciate you. We had five super chats today. Uh, everyone, I really appreciate you. I hope to see you on Saturday for the pastel live stream. And uh, thank you so much. And take care, everybody. And I will see you either on Saturday or on next Wednesday. Next Wednesday will be part five of this por portrait. And then on Saturday for the pastel live stream, we're going to be working on this going in with color. This is the underpainting for our pastel painting. So a lot of good things coming up. Next week you'll have information on the portrait uh, contest, which first prize is a customized Extreme Patriot Arrow. You guys are all, guys and girls are all great. Thank you so much for hanging out. Bye everybody.